Hey guys, it's Chili here, and it is time for another coding challenge. I got, a, I got an interesting one for you guys this time. I think you're gonna like it. You're gonna be coding an AI for a robot agent who's gonna have to navigate and uh, explore a maze. Uh, the main goal here is to get the, the robo dude here and get him to his goal here by navigating through this maze. Now the robo dude can only see the three tiles that are right in front of him so you're going to have to figure out how to get him to his place. You don't get to see the entire map and read it out of memory. You only get to see the three tiles that are directly in front of you. Uh, so I've created this, uh, this visual sandbox here that will allow you to run your simulations and validate them and design them. Uh, it's very simple, the controls. You can figure it out. You can scroll like this. This sets auto-scrolling. This tells you the state. This will tell you how many steps you have currently taken. Right now we're paused. You can single step like this. And you can play, which will automatically step. This slider will control the speed of stepping. So here you are. our dude is moving very fast now. Many steps are being taken. So that's the basics of the control and the environment here. Now let's take a look at the actual development environment. Uh, the interface is incredibly simple. I have designed it as such. Your Robo AI files are found in here. And what you have to do is you have to implement a class, uh, an AI class. It ha The class has to implement a function plan. That function will take an array of tile map tile type. I've just made an alias here to make it shorter, but it's taking an array of three tile types and that uh, those are the three tiles that it, the robot sees in front of it from left to right. Uh, you can take a look at tile type, the enumeration, if you just, you know, go to definition here. There are wall, floor, goal, and, you know, invalid, you don't see that one. So you will get that as your input. Your output will be the robo action and there are four actions you can take, turn right, turn left, move forward, and they find, there's another action called done, and done is how the robot signals that it has made it to the goal and is finished. So you signal done under two conditions. Either you have, you're standing on the goal, or you have determined that the goal is unreachable. You signal done to show that you have decided that it is impossible. And if you are correct, then you solve it. If you are not correct, then you fail. You get nothing. Good day, sir. And that's it. You just implement a robot type, you implement the plan function, and that is all you need. Uh, now, I have a, the, the name of your robot has to be Robo AI. Uh, you can use a type def to name your personal name of your robot to Robo AI for the purposes of it working in the engine here. Uh, now there are some other things here, I'm going to go over them briefly, but the main thing I want to, you to know about this challenge is the responsibility is ultimately on you to explore and to figure out how this engine works. I'll give you some, I'll give you an overview here, I will give you more information on the official challenge page, which I'll show you later on, on the wiki, not on the wiki, on the forum, but ultimately the responsibility is not on me to explain every little detail to you. It is on you to experiment and figure out how these things work. That being said, there is another type of Robo AI that you can build. And this is uh, debug, Robo AI debug is what I call it. That is what you must type define it as. And it is a visualization debug. So this Robo uh, differs from the standard one in that its constructor has to take a reference to something called debug controls. And what debug controls are, are is just a class that allows you to get information about the map uh, that you would normally not have access to. And it also allows you to mark visually tiles on the map. And you can use that marking to create a visualization of your algorithm as it runs. I will be doing that when I show you my solution. So you can take advantage of this during development, you can create a debug version of a robot. Uh, it has to have this constructor. It has to have a, a bool implemented, const expression bool, and that is the signal to the engine whether or not this is an implemented debug or whether Robo AI debug is unimplemented. So if you set this to false, you're signaling that you are not implementing uh, visualization debug AI. 
so this is an example of not implementing one. You could just copy and paste this if you are not going to implement. But if you are going to implement, then you want to do something like this. You will probably want to have a reference to debug controls and set that up in the constructor. Uh, you'll want to set implemented equal to true. And in your plan, you will probably want to use the debug controls to do something. Here we are, basically what we're doing is every time we move forward, we are going to set the current position of the robot uh, to this color here, green. And I'm setting it to green with the alpha value of 32, so you can still see the tile underneath. And you use the debug control function mark at to mark that tile. Uh, for what, now, to control the way that the engine runs, there are some settings you can set in sim.ini. One of those settings is the name of the map file. We'll get to the map file in a second. Another setting is the, the mode that it runs in. There's visual, and then there's visual debug, and debug will show the debug markings, and it will try to, uh, it will try to instantiate the debug version of the AI if it exists. You can also set the direction that the robot starts out in, and you can set the, uh, the resolution. But let's see what the debug visual where it looks like. So if we step forward, we can see that the robot is marking where it moves. We can let it run and give us some speed here. And you can see it marks where it is. Obviously not a very useful visualization here. It's obviously not a very useful um, algorithm for the robot. But uh, hopefully you can do something a little more interesting. And like I said, I will be doing something more interesting when I give you my take on the solution. So, um, that's it. You can do things like you can change the resolution, like I said, let's um, set the height to 200. And I'll save that. Now what you can do is you can press the backspace to reset the program. And now we're running at, you know, resolution of height of 200. Looks pretty dumb. Probably don't do that, but whatever. It's a free world, you can do what the hell you want. 800 by 600, I believe that was. So, that's the INI file. That is the basics of setting up a debug visualization AI. Now, one thing you should know about the visualization AI. Uh, where is my robo AI? Here it is. Visualization, uh, when it runs in visualization mode, is going to run the AI on a separate thread than the graphics. And so because of this, what you can do is you can visualize your algorithm as it works. Uh, so you can show step by step, for example, the tiles that it examines as it tries to find a path uh, to the next place where it wants to move. So, um, yeah, and if you look into debugcontrols.h, you can see all the functions that are available. I have commented the ones that are maybe not so clear. But basically, you're going to use wait on tick if you want to visualize your algorithm as it runs. Wait on tick will allow your algorithm to run at the speed set by this slider here. So you experiment with that, figure out how it works. Last thing is the tile map. Um, the format of that, you've got the width and height of the map, you've got the start position, coordinates, zero based, and then you have the tile map itself, pretty self-explanatory, hashtag is wall, dot is floor, and percent sign is the goal. Uh, you can add your own maps, you can change this map, it doesn't really matter. Uh, now, let's talk about the, uh, the basic parameters of the, the challenge here. Uh, you're gonna, you, you, AI is gonna be run on a map. It's gonna be different than this map. Probably run on many different maps, and we'll take an aggregate of all the scores. Scores will be based number one, most important, fewest moves taken to reach the goal. Number two um, will be the amount of CPU time that your algorithm eats up. And uh, number three will be the readability of your code. This is important for a number of reasons, but the main reason is uh, one rule that I hope I don't have to mention, but I will mention anyways. You're not allowed to read your, your normal AI, the, the competition version, 
will not be allowed to read directly the memory of the tile map. So obviously if your code is all obfuscated and I can't verify whether or not it's doing something it shouldn't be, then it will be disqualified. So write code that is legible, that is clean. Don't write gook garbage with variable names that don't make any goddamn sense because that might get you disqualified. That's all I'm saying. Um, and the last thing I will take into consideration is if you have a cool visualization of your algorithm, that might get you some bonus points because obviously I will want to showcase cool looking algorithms with cool visualizations. So those are the four things. Um, the map size will be minimum uh, four by four, maximum thousand by a thousand. So keep that in mind when you are designing your algorithm perhaps. I'm going to link to this on this web on this uh, video in the description. This is the official page for the challenge. All the updates for the challenge will be co going into here. This is where all the official information will be. Um, you can have discussion about the challenge here. Anything goes, you can ask clarification questions or submit bug reports or whatever you want to do. If you don't want the uh, if you don't want the solution spoiled for you, I suggest you don't read the comments here. You can also ask me information on the Discord if you are afraid of you know seeing spoilers. Although I doubt anyone will be divulging their secrets while the uh, competition is running. If you're challenging this after the competition has finished, probably don't want to read this uh, thread. Anyways, oh, and I haven't talked about how the, the code is to be submitted. I'll, I'll explain that in here as well at some point. But the way you submit is, well, let's take a look at the, the structure of the folder here. Uh, the RoboAI is in its own folder. You will submit your AI code files zipped up in this folder here. Only this part. You don't, you don't submit the entire solution. Only submit the AI part. And you must submit RoboAI.h and RoboAI.cpp. Uh, you can add any additional header files. Don't add any additional CPP files because what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take your zip files and I'm going to drag them into here and then I'm going to try to build it. So if you add additional CPPs, they will not be added to the solution. They will not get built and you will probably get disqualified because your code doesn't get built. So you can add as many headers as you like. Only have the one CPP file. Make sure you include the CPP file even if there's nothing in it because I will want to have it overwrite whatever was ever in there before. If the CPP file from the previous uh, person who I've tested still remains, that's going to be a problem. So include at least both of these files. If you fail to follow these rules, then you will be disqualified. No exceptions. So, that's that. You can ask questions on the forum. Uh, or on the Discord, and oh yeah, the code. You're gonna get the code here. It's, the link is on the dis or on the forum here, and I suggest that you perhaps uh, fork this code. And if you're good at um, if you're good at GitHub, you will. I might make modifications, improvements. To the sandbox. I will not make any improvements. I will not make any changes that break AIs. So even if you write your AI against the original version that you have right now here, you will not break anything. But um, I might make improvements to the A to the interface. And then if you uh, fork this then you and you also create a branch that you work in your own dev branch then what you can do is you can pull changes from my repo into your repo into the master and then you can rebase your dev branch on top of the master and you will get all of the upgrades to the interface but this you can do whatever you want you don't have to do that it's not mandatory but this is where you get the code all right I think I've talked enough here. I think I've explained most of the things. I've probably forgotten some of the things, but I don't care. Uh, you can ask questions and updates will be happening periodically here. So make sure you check in on this page every now and then. Oh, well, I guess I should tell you how long the, the, the challenge is going to run for. It is going to run for about a week. You can check this page. We'll have the final deadline um, when I figure it out. But it's going to be about a week. So you have about a week to do this. So yeah, 
gentlemen start your pathfinding engines and i hope you have fun with this challenge because i think it will be a lot of fun i had fun writing my own solution i had less fun writing the user interface but that's just because i hate writing user, user interfaces so hope you enjoy that and uh yeah after the challenge is finished, after I've collected all of the uh, submissions, I will take some time to uh, test them all out, and I will give, I will have post another video showing the results. Maybe, maybe a week after the deadline, after all this, the final deadline for submission. I don't know, but there will be a report video coming out sometime after that. So look forward to that, gentlemen. Start your engines. And uh, I will see you on the other side.